faster powders maximize short barrel velocity. So I've been operating under what may or may not be a misconception. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of anything like Gordon's reloading tool or uh, quick load, but what these are, they're a program that has thousands and thousands and thousands of inputs about various powders and various physical characteristics of cartridges, chambers, barrels, and various chemical characteristics of how these powders burn under particular pressure curves. And so when you plug in charge weights with various powders into Gordon's reloading tool, it outputs very predictable predictions as for what your velocity is going to be. It seems obvious, right, that we, we lose velocity as we shorten the barrel. But I'm running powders in the burn rate chart right around 8208 XBR and ramshot tack, which are optimized for right around an 18 to 20 inch barrel. And I'll get 2,700 feet per second out of my 18 inch rifle and I get 2,450 out of my 11 and a half inch gun. What I haven't done is tried really fast powders which only promise a velocity around, you know, 2,500 feet per second out of the 18 inch gun to see if I still get close to 2,500 feet per second out of the 11 and a half inch gun. Because it says in Gordon's reloading tool that a couple of these powders are completely burned. They're at a full burn by like six inches down the barrel. In spite of that, Gordon's reloading tool shows less velocity out of the 11 and a half inch gun with those powders on a curve, just like if it took the whole barrel to burn them. I asked the guys on Shooters Forum yesterday I only got one response that counts. And he said to read Spears article called Why Ballisticians Have Gray Hairs. And he said that it'll explain a lot to me. And that I may very well get a different answer than what Gordon's reloading tool says, but I also may very well get the same thing and not know why. So after firing this test, we'll first take a look at this brass. Starting from the two loads on the left are the loads loaded with LT32. This was once fired ammo ink brass. This is the second firing of it from new. The third and fourth columns are the loads with ramshot exterminator. The fifth and sixth columns are the loads loaded with accurate 2495. And the final column here was the load loaded with accurate 2460. And the loads loaded with the stay ball match, that brass was on its final firing. It was not the ammo ink brass and it got thrown away. To conclude, for 20.5 grains of LT32, 
We've got an average velocity of 2,250 feet per second, a standard deviation of 13, and a group size of 0 0.678 inches. For 21.0 grains of LT32, we've got an average velocity of 2,344 feet per second, a standard deviation of 7, and a group size of 0 0.560 inches. 22.2 grains X Terminator gave us an average velocity of 2177 feet per second, and a standard deviation of 22, group size 0 0.995 inches. 22.7 grains of X Terminator gave us an average velocity of 2232 feet per second, standard deviation of 12, and a group size of 0 0.483 inches. Accurate 2495, 21.9 grains gave us an average velocity of 2182 feet per second, a standard deviation of 23, and a group size of 0 0.800 inches. 22.4 grains of accurate 2495 gave us a mean velocity of 2,203 feet per second, a standard deviation of 13, and a group size of 0 0.925 inches. 25.0 grains of accurate 2460 gave us an average velocity of 2,398 feet per second, a standard deviation of 13, and a group size of 0 0.800 inches. 25.0 grains of stay ball match, which was three tenths of a grain short of a max charge, gave us a mean velocity of 2,310 feet per second, a standard deviation of six, and a group size of 1.085 inches. To conclude what I learned here was that optimizing powder speed for barrel length is somewhat of a misconception. LT32 being the fastest powder that I tested only yielded the second fastest velocities. And I think that has more to do with the particular powder and bullet combination that I was using, the cartridge efficiency and optimization for the bullet that I'm using, it's that it's that thing about ballisticians having gray hairs. I think that this is cartridge and bullet specific, potentially even chamber specific, much more than it is a rule that if you want to optimize velocity out of a short barrel to just use faster powder. Gordon's reloading tool, quick load, and Pmax all issue similar data as it relates to velocities out of shorter barrels with all of these powder burn rates. So that the maximum velocity that you can achieve out of a 24 inch barrel, in general, that exact load is still going to yield you the best velocity out of a short barrel, no matter how little sense that seems to make from a layman's point of view. The physics and chemistry behind this, I don't exactly understand, but I was warned by people that I was getting into difficult to explain matters. I just didn't trust the quick load and the Gordon's reloading tool data because something about it seems to not make sense. That if I was burning up all of my powder in six inches of barrel, that that particular gun should show very, very, that particular load should show very, very little change in a longer barrel, which is true, but that you can generally run that curve backwards, but you can't run it forwards. So I wish now that I would have loaded up one more test with the slowest powder that I have, which is CFE223. 
but I didn't. But I got a feeling that a max charge with CFE, that will put me near 2,850 feet per second out of the 18-inch barrel. And I'm pretty sure that that will absolutely yield me the fastest velocity out of the short barrel. So misconception has been myth busted. And thanks for coming out. And I hope you've learned something.